Halloween again in it. And this year I've got this eye-pleasing array of LED pumpkin lights from Poundland, which we can use for set decoration and maximum spooky effect. Let's turn them on! They're on now. And we can add a certain little extra something spooky with this amazing party popper thing from uh, Fright Night, which is Poundland's Halloween range. I seem to remember having something like this before, and it didn't even have, like, confetti shaped like spiders, it was just a normal party popper. But let's see how it goes! Oh good, it's all stuck up in the air. <laughs> Hang on, let's get some of it down. Well, at least it's not bright colours or something. Actually, it looks like somebody got a load of ash up their nose and then sneezed across the sofa. Lovely. Anyway, let's start looking at some exciting Halloween treats we've got from the pound lands of the world. And we start off with Fright Night Halloween characters. It's fake Lego. And I'll tell you what, it's pretty frickin' shit. Um, this is something is usually called block tech. It's a very, very popular range of uh, cheapy Lego. Poundland have done various four packs of characters, but this, to my knowledge, is the first time they've done a Halloween set. From left to right we have Demented Slasher Movie Fan, Evil Television Presenter, Reject from Sons of Anarchy, and the guy you really don't want to have to queue up for at customer service. Well, they act ah, there are actual names. Zombie Man, Zombie Girl, Skeleton, and Vampire. Yep, put a lot of thought into that, didn't you, lads? Right, let's open them up and see what they're actually like. Should have actually thought of this beforehand and got rid of the sellotape. But I didn't, and I don't have a knife or anything on me. Ah! There we are. We will rend it with strengths. Um, yeah, these are exactly as we see frequently. The arms are a bit sort of daffy and the ends fall off. The haircuts are all a bit terrible and look like crash hats or something, or kind of make them look like a 90s band. The legs are disturbingly hollow from the back, and they've got weird little dimples on the knees, but they hold together all right. I mean, for 25p each, you can't really complain until you see the faces, because they're frankly all a bit shite. Yeah, not entirely convinced by the uh, zombie setup on this one, to say the least. Although I do quite like the look of the skeleton. Something eye pleasing about that. Looks like he's got a spooky ski mask on or something. Also, it gets massive, massive bonus points for having a skull actually moulded onto the hat. You don't normally get attention to detail like that on crappy um, Poundland figures, so well done, all concerned. There we are. I'm sure nothing will top that throughout this. In fact, looking at what's coming next, it probably won't. Oi! Careful where you stick that bleeding knife. Bleeding knife with blood! Halloween. I think this one was... Pound world? Can't remember now. But I do remember being extremely disappointed. The whole point of a bleeding knife is usually it has like a plastic sheath on it and this sort of blood that goes up and down it. This isn't a bleeding knife at all. It's literally just a cheap plastic knife with some fake blood to pour on it. This is cheating. Bleeding knife indeed. I mean, come on, guys. You can do better than this. It, what is this? Construct your own Halloween prop because you can't be asked, dearie me. Let's look at something far more high quality to uh, get back into the swing. Ooh. It is a spooky dead bride woman thing. I think this actually comes from last year's Poundland stuff. Um, if I remember actually, somebody gave me this at MCM. Thank you if that's true and it was you. And this is quite nicely done. I mean, for a pound anyway. It looks sort of unpleasant and scary and mouldy and it looks like it's been festering in the ground a bit. Although she's managed to look after her hair because, hey, she's worth it. And yeah, a big rose in the hand that's maybe a little bit too big. But it works. Oh, I was jilted at the altar 4,000 years ago, and yet I've managed to keep my dress pleasingly white with dreft or something. Was dreft even the um, <laughs> washing powder? I can't remember now. It's probably not been sold for 400 years. Hey, there we are. That sort of fits in with when she was buried and all was well. Anyway, this year 99p stores decided to have a go at making something similar. Wait for it. Turns out that that pound and that 99p do make quite a difference. That one penny between them apparently houses all of the quality. 
I mean, just look at it. It's, it's like the cheapest skull they could find, and they just got somebody to spit caramel in its face. It's supposedly sort of the same thing. Even the rose isn't as good. The wig is kind of going bald and weird, and it's got loads of visible glue. The veil's crap, the little ermine collar thing. Well, that's about the same, actually, we'll give it that. And the cloth is very, very similar that's made out of... But look at the bloody skull. Honestly, Pound World, you've let the side down. God, it just looks like... Do you know what this looks like? This is the absolute worst thing that happened in Willy Wonka's chocolate factory that they covered up in the movie. Just some child with his face melted off with caramel. I ah, uh, mother, help me! Oh, it's very sweet, though. Right, enough of this comedic nonsense. Time for some true horror with a mask. Oh yeah, terrifying Halloween pirate mask. This was sent to me from a country other than this one, I believe. I think it came from America, I'm not sure. Dollarama, three dollars. I thought the whole point of Dollar Arm was that everything cost one dollar. Well, that proves what I know. Anyway, welcome to Halloween Pirate Mask! Which is pretty fucking terrifying on many levels. I tell you what it is that does it for me. It actually looks like somebody has skinned a pirate's face. It doesn't kind of look like a mask, it just looks like a severed face. Like when the Joker peeled his own one off in the bloody New 52 comics. Well, Blackbeard did the same, because apparently he's easily impressed by such things. Um, I wonder what this looks like on. Well, that was a mistake that won't fade from memory quickly. Anyway, time to look at Tombstone Corners. Now, this is something else sent in. I think, again, this is American. I'm not entirely sure. Could be uh, Canadian, actually, because you've got it in French on there. Hey, maybe it's French. No, no. USA, Greenbrier International and Chesapeake. Oh, yes, we've heard of these before. Halloween figurines. Look, everyone, it's a little spooky gargoyle thing. Fair enough. And then you've got, like, this tooth monster rotting in an electric chair or something. Not exactly high quality paint on the teeth there. And then you've got sort of spooky bride holding a weird ice cream scoop that may be supposed to be a mirror. Not entirely sure. Well, they did loads of these. Anyway, I'm now going to show you my six favourites from the ones sent in. First up we have Mad Professor Woman holding up I think that's the stuff they used to eat in early episodes of The Simpsons, when they sat down at the dinner table, just this sort of purple mush. All the legs are stuck together, uh, crappy 70s glasses, and absolutely terrible all round. But don't worry, it gets better with the... no, oh no, it doesn't, it gets much, much worse. With the male mad scientist, you've got some crazy stuff coming off his arm, where they haven't moulded it properly. He appears to be holding up two grey sacks, I don't think what they are, probably Gibbon's scrotums or something, and the face kind of has ruptured itself. This is why they give you dental braces. If not, that happens to you, and your whole face erupts. Also his glasses are... well, I can't even work out what's going on with those. But we save the best for last in this little set with good old Igor. Here he is holding the skull of a small chimp, while simultaneously having the most frightening smile ever to have existed. Also, his hunch is disturbingly bulbous. I think it might just be inflatable, and he's putting it on in order to fit type. Uh, let's just get that face in there. Yeah, there we are. Happy Halloween, everybody! Hey! Don't forget to floss. Also, his uh, helmet is rubbish. It looks like he made it out of an old crock pot or something. But fear not, the witch will come in. At least I think it's supposed to be a witch. I can't really tell. Seems to be holding... Is it supposed to be a ladle? A bugle? A chicken leg or something? I've got no idea. And the face? I, mean, it's not, I was going to say it's not showing very well on the camera, but you can't see it with the naked eye either. It's just like this green and black mess. I think, rather than a witch, it may just be a demented maid. Also, her skin appears to be leaking all the way down her front, which is often a problem. Then we've got... Zombie Businessman! <laughs> I've got no idea. The face is quite spooky on that one, so it does actually earn some points. But other than that, yeah, it's a load of old crap. But what really worries me about this one is the brown stuff that seems to have run down his trouser leg and pooled on the floor. That's right, it's Posh Zombie with Diarrhea! Coming soon to Netflix. And finally, Werewolf. But really fucking confused and frightened Werewolf. Oh, oh, oh! Is he supposed to be being beaten by the townsfolk? Is he just really scared? Has he accidentally walked into a cinema showing of the Keith Lemon film and is terrified he's going to see a second of it? I've got no... Oh, hang on, he's on his knees! I think. Is he? Looks like he's sunk into the floor. Ah, if he's on his knees, it's probably a goal celebration, isn't it? There we are, he's just scored in the final minute. Hooray! FIFA corruption! Or whatever the hell's going on in football these days. Anyway, let's just have that face close up. 
just for your new wallpaper at home. Right, what's next? How about something to decorate the old sofa with? It's going to look a bit plain, isn't it? How about some lovely Halloween window stickers from good old Pound World? Can be used on any clean, dry surface. Well, that's the sofa fuck then. Now, here's what the window stickers are. Weird bloody footprints, so you can make it look like a bleeding zombie has walked up your windows or something, which I don't think is really something that will confuse people. However, what actually confused the hell out of me is that you've got the dirty footprint thing there, and then what the hell is this in that case? It's like got a load of flesh on it or something. How are they supposed to have flayed the sole of somebody's foot and stuck it on here? But is it just like a different for I just don't understand what they were thinking on this at all. Right, self-cling static window stickers. Removable and reusable. Oh, great. Yeah, you can see me using these all year round. Um, these aren't going to stick to the sofa at all, actually, are they? They're going to be some sort of plasticky thing. But we'll give it a go. Come on. Out you comes. In we go. And there we are. You two can have weird small footprints stuck all over it. Oh, God, it has actually stuck. My goodness was not expecting that. Wow. The true horror of the world is revealed. Well, that's absolutely beautiful. Shall we stick uh, the other type of foot thing on there as well? I really don't know who designs these things, or what on earth is going through their head at the time. Probably quiet desperation, because they've got three minutes to actually design something to be sold. There we are. Oh, God, it's clear. Is it supposed to be on a white background? That's just looking weird now. I, I don't know what's going on with that whatsoever. I am immensely confused, and my hatred glands have been kicked in as a result. Anyway, it's about this time on Halloween that I like to perform a bank robbery of some type. But fortunately, Pound World's knitted mask has provided me with an element of anonymity. I'm trying to work out what's going on here, right? You've got the obvious um, Frankenstein thing on the top. And then these are the eyes. That's supposed to be the mouth and like a nose with something coming out. Or is this also... Because, you know, your actual nose is going to be about here and your mouth's going to be here. So what is that? Is that supposed to be a long... I'm immensely confused by it. Maybe it'll make much more sense when I put it on. It did not make more sense when I put it on. And then that thing fell off. Anyway, time for some more shit Halloween Lego, because apparently Lego and Halloween is the new thing on the block. It's Zombie Car and Tombstone! Also a popular French detective series. He's Zombie Car, she's Tombstone. Together, they throw the book out of the window as they chase down the criminals with very little regard for the law they're supposed to uphold. <laughs> zombie Car and Tombstone. Six, twelve years, fifty blocks. Or that probably wouldn't be part of the theme tune. But anyway, how the fuck is that a zombie car? What, it's, it's like a car with eyes? And that's a zombie car? I'm really not understanding this at all. Also, bizarrely, we've got the tombstone with fire coming out of the front. In fact, it looks like a cross between a tombstone, a petrol pump, and a Teletubby. I really don't understand it at all. Does the back of the box hold any secrets? Nope. The, the back of the box just kind of shows them on the surface of the moon, which has become a graveyard. And there's a wolf in the background or something. Quality blocks compatible with other leading brands, such as Poo Block, Block 70, Big Block Barry, and all your favours. Right, um, here's the instructions. Here's all 50 bricks. Oh, God, I'm going to have to build it, aren't I? Jumpy Cutto. Bing! And as if by magic... Some disappointing Lego appeared. No, I'm going to be honest with you, I can't really fault this for a pound. The pieces went together well, the instructions were good, and it's all held together nicely. You've got a few bits of errant sprue which might pierce your children's fingers. But other than that, zombie car is go. I feel we should uh, move the camera down a bit to give full zombie car benefit. Ooh, there's loads of fluff come off something there. Lovely. Look forward to cleaning that up later. Go on then. Can evil TV present a woman? sit on the back of it or something. I Does she stand here? I don't really understand what... No, is, is that her? I'm going to be honest, I don't think this is really designed to go with the figures, but she'll stand on it anyway. Why is the tombstone so much bigger than the car? What is a zombie car? Why is there fire coming out of the tombstone? Why does there seem to be a screen in the tombstone? This is conceptually a very, very bizarre set, but the little pieces fit together well and it's only a quid, so what can we complain about? Well, here's something we can complain about. The next item! <laughs> Because, tragically, it's time for some food. 
Oh goody. Right, apparently in America, candy corn is a thing. Um, and it's like quite a popular thing to give out to trick-or-treaters at Halloween. Unfortunately, we have this seasonal crispy treat from Peddler's Pantry. Thanks, Peddler. Or is that your job? Is that your name? Does anybody care? How old is this thing, for God's sake? Seasonal crispy treat. Could you be any more generic? Best before 12th the 2nd, 2015. Brilliant. And it's nine months out. Or is it? Hang on. That's probably an American date, which would mean 2nd of December. It's actually in date. It just looks monstrous. So it's kind of looking, we're supposed to look like candy corn, but is in fact Rice Krispies with goo on, with a load of icing on top, and then some red stuff, and then some horrible baubles, and then I don't know what the hell's going on. Right, I suppose I'm going to have to bite into this and then just regret the fact I was ever fucking born. Um, what does it smell of? Ooh, I thought I saw a hair in it then. It smells of... Ugh, sort of mank with a sweet aftertaste. Oh god, this is going to be awful, isn't it? Right? Ah. Ah. Oh, that's horrible. Oh, what even is that? Oh, dearie me. <coughs> oh, it gets better as it goes on, actually. Yeah, it's quite bland after a while. It is just awful. It just tastes of sort of cheap sugar and obviously Rice Krispies and, you know, more sugar. And it's, there's something slightly off to it that I can't put my finger on. Maybe it's just all the chemicals used to preserve it. But I'll tell you what, if you see one of those when you're out trick-or-treating, stop trick-or-treating immediately and move to a country that doesn't celebrate Halloween. Oh, my goodness. Right, let's end up with something of true beauty. I present to you, moving these out of the way so we've got some room for it, Fright Night Light Projector. Project spooky images. Ooh, look at your student debt. Ooh. Yes, um, don't forget three AAA batteries. No, I didn't forget them. I've already put it in. This is a very unimpressive device. It may come in a cardboard box, but it's just a tube of shite. It has two buttons, LED and start. No, star. LED. Literally turns on an LED. Enable us to see a witch's hat, a ghost, happy Halloween, a spid, a weird cat's arse has exploded. Another witch's hat or a hole, I don't know what that's supposed to be. An evil cat, a bat, happy Halloween, a jack-o'-lantern thing, and another bat. Marvellous. Or I'll tell... Oh, hang on. That one's the LED that just turns the light on, and that one flashes multicoloured lights and you can't have them both on at once. Basically, the star overrules the LED. Useful advice for any mathematicians out there. Right, let's turn the lights off and see what joy we have. Just open it up a bit so we can see the lights in the background as well for that full spooky Halloween effect. That... <sighs> Fuck it, we'll just cut to it, Errol. Well, that's worked better than I thought it would. Cue the spooky music! And oh my goodness, look at the ceiling. Subscribe for more. It's like all the demons of hell have risen up to terrify... Oh, who are we kidding? It's a load of bloody plastic pumpkin heads. Anyway, let us begin by creating an even more horrifying atmosphere using some of these Fright Night 15 party poppers. I have a feeling we've sort of used these before, or a very similar product. And actually, they were just normal party poppers that they put a sort of Halloween sticker on. And they didn't even have sort of spider-shaped confetti or anything. But hey... 
Let's hope they're better this year. Right, moving swiftly on, 